Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I got a review for you of this little guy right here. This is the Soule Knives Deckard uh, Gigantic Freaking Survival Knife. Um, but first off, though, before I go any further, I want to thank uh, Polish Custom Knives for sending this guy along. Um, what actually happened in this case is I reached out to them. They posted a picture of this on the Instagram. I said, holy crap, that thing's beautiful. They said, hey, hey, you, you, you want to check one out? I said, oh yeah, absolutely. Um, but as always, I told them I'm going to talk about the good, the great, the bad, and the ugly. It might be a gem might be junk. They did still send it along. Nonetheless, we do have to assume this is the very best quality controlled one of these guys ever, and I'm doing my best not to let that affect the nature or the quality of my review, but anyways, uh, th 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 there is that. Next thing, let's do some size comparison real quick. Um, This is a gigantic freaking knife. Uh, we'll put it up here against the uh, Spydeco PM2 and the Spydeco Delica, and what we see here is that either of these knives could fit their overall length within the, the blade length of the Deckard here. This is a gigantic freaking knife. Here it is against the Ontario Rat number two, which once again reveals this to be a gigantic freaking knife. Um, and actually, I'm going to put it up against a couple of other fixed blades that I appreciate. Here it is against the uh, Monterey Bay Knives Field Trekker, uh, revealing this again to be a gigantic freaking knife. And then here it is against the Spydeco uh, Respect Bowie, which is yet another gigantic freaking knife. And uh, we see here that this guy feels like it ends up dwarfing it, right? Um, if it makes the respect seem small, it is a gigantic freaking knife. So this is a very, very large knife. I, I hope you've gotten that understanding here. Um, the overall actual length of it is, uh, it's got an 8.27 inch blade, which, oh my God. Um, and it is also gigantic on this dimension as well. Um, this is in fact thicker in blade stock than some of my knives are overall, right? So this is a gigantic freaking knife. Next thing, who's this maker? Well, the maker on this guy is a guy named Dominic Soule, um, and uh, I, I'm probably mispronouncing your name. Sorry about that, Dominic, but what we see here is a uh, very nice little maker's mark. He is a Polish custom knife maker, which makes sense why he'd work with Polish custom knives, but nonetheless, um, this is just a really, really cool knife, and I so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to call this a quick review because at some level, I, I can't review gigantic freaking fixed blades in exactly the same way as I review regular pocket knives, but this is, um, yeah, so I'm going to tell you what I'm liking it about it, what I'm not so liking uh, that much, and uh, it's going to feel a little ridiculous to review what is pretty clearly an art-style knife as a just good old-fashioned pocket knife, but I'm going to power through, so let's go ahead and talk about what I'm loving, what I'm not loving so much. Good side. I do love the handle here. The handle on this knife is really, really great. And I say that for a couple of different reasons. Here, let me put it in the sheath just so I don't hurt myself quite as much. Um, The handle of this knife is quite... Well, eh, damn it, that... Anyways, I'll hold it like so. Is very, very nice. And there are a couple of reasons for that. I mean, to start with, you've got yourself a nice little G10 sort of situation here. The G10 on this knife looks very, very good. I'm a, I'm a big fan of the G10 here. And it, what it does is it actually shows the three-dimensionality of this handle, which is indeed very very three-dimensional quite well. We see here that you can see all of the different contours. You can see all of the pivots, or I'm sorry, all the divots, that is. Uh, if there were pivots, you'd see those too. But you can see it really well, and it adds a, a level of kind of almost quantization to it, where you get discrete rings rather than being just one curve. This is a very nice high-polished G10, um, but it just looks excellent, um, and that's great. And then in the middle here, you actually have little bits of a micarta. It almost looks sort of like a canvas micarta, uh, like you might see on another pocket knife, but you see those little bits of micarta running down the back here. You also have these little brass pins that are inlaid in four places, as well as the lanyard hole, um, which is going all the way through, obviously, uh, and is a complete brass tube throughout there, and it's beautifully chamfered. Everything is very flush. Everything is very smooth, with one small exception, um, and then that goes up to the guard, and the guard on this is a polished brass. You can see right there the uh, uh, Nick Chavez gem t-shirt, available at uh, nickchavez.com slash merch. Anyways, I digress, um, but you see a, a beautiful guard here that is polished where there are just no gaps at all between the guard and the po uh, the guard and the handle here. It's just beautifully smooth, uh, really, really well done, and I, it's just a really, really nice handle with very interesting contouring, not sharp edges, but you know, in many cases, very clearly defined edges. Um, it's just great, um, and we see here, actually, that there is a polish on the brass on every single angle here. 
uh, except along the top and the front where the uh, the coating takes over in the other places. So anyways, um, the, the handle is great. I also like the blade of this knife pretty substantially um, because it is big and it is dumb and it is thick and it is aggressive, right? This is a big, thick blade. This is seven millimeter blade stock. From a functional perspective, that is absolutely not the play, right? This becomes much more of a splitting wedge than it does an actual pocket knife. Well, okay, we've gone far away from pocket knife at this point in time. And But what you see here is is that uh, this is just a really, really nice, attractive blade. Um, and so on this blade, you get a couple of different finishes. I mean, not only does it come down to a relatively thin edge, which I do appreciate, by the way. Um, I've had pocket knives in the three-inch range that are thicker behind the edge than this thing is. Um, so it is a very, very nice grind, but you also see a very nice satin finish on it there. It does pick up fingerprints as you handle it and as you use it. I was actually using this guy yesterday, attacking some cardboard and whatnot, which I give you is patently ridiculous, but I do have to tell the knife to review it, right? But anyways, um, so, so there's that. And you know what? The little swedge along the top here is very neat, along with this little bit in the back where the swedge starts, comes to a nice thin. It's just a really cool blade uh, in that way. Um, the sheath on it is also quite nice, um, although it doesn't really match the overall style of the knife. Um, it is a good sheath in that it has uh, two different options for hanging the sheath. You can either hang it uh, horizontally along your belt in this way, or you could hang it vertically using this little drop loop guy. Um, it does have have, you know, this knife isn't coming out of there unless you undo this leather, but the leather is very easy to undo. Um, and, you know, they, they've just done a really nice job of it. I think this is a good sheath and it will absolutely work functionally speaking, even if it sort of doesn't fit the aesthetic of the rest of it. Um, so uh, the, the, the sheath is nice and it is nice that it comes with a sheath, although anything this expensive should come with a sheath, right? Um, so there's that. Next thing, this does have a lot of nice little details. I mean, I already showed off the maker's logo, which is done very, very well on here. But it's also got this nice little swedge area here where not only do you get a swedge on the top here, which kind of makes this feel even more buoy knife-ish, but it's kind of different because you you get this sort of weird milling that goes on where it kind of cuts off to the side and then it comes right back out of it. And so you get this sort of contour at the top there, which is pretty unique. I'm not sure I've seen that done elsewhere. And it adds a little bit of extra piratation. I don't even know what the proper term is here, but it, it looks really, really cool. You also get a full sharpening choil on the knife alongside the, uh, the what appears to be a second kind of cutout here um, behind the Ricasso which again adds to its buoy toot a little bit on there. Um, the, uh, the the handle on this guy I've already talked about looks beautiful, but this layering of the G10 is something that is really hard to capture in pictures, but turns out to be really compelling in person. Um, you know, uh, from the top and from the side, it's not all that crazy, but done like this, oh yes, that's really nice. And the guard on this guy is really, really cool, right? Um, what we have here is a piece of what feels to be a brass um, of some variety, uh, and it does naturally take a patina but it is just really, really nicely sculpted. It fits the overall aesthetic of the knife very, very well. It does serve very well as a guard. There's no way you're going up onto the blade with this guy. It's very well fitted around the corner here. This is just a knife that, they, that the makers put a lot of effort into. And then the other thing that's worth highlighting is actually that this section here, so all the way from here up to the top, this is not just a reflection of a dark material. This is actually a black coating on the blade here. If I take a little bit of a, put a little light on the subject here, what we see is that this is actual blackness here rather than just being a, uh, the, the, there is some kind of a coating on there rather than it just being a, a black reflection. That was something that actually caught me off guard. I didn't see that in the original pictures um, because it just does look like it's constantly reflecting a little bit of darkness, uh, but nonetheless, it looks cool. So um, I, I like that a lot. And then finally on the good side, this is just a beautiful knife to my estimation. It really does look like like a Bowie knife that would be carried by a replicant from the future, right? I know it's not going to be to everybody's taste, and there are going to be a bunch of people in the comments, that's ugly hot bass, but to me, this is unequivocally badass, right? Um, you know, I showed this to my wife, and she said, oh my god, that's overkill, but you know what? I, I, I got to appreciate it. It is a very nice piece of knife design, and it feels relatively unique, right? There were lots of people doing Bowie knives out there, but this one feels a little bit different, different enough that even seeing all the Bowie knives out there at a given show and whatnot. This one jumped off the table, so to speak, or jumped off the Instagram. Uh, and so I got to appreciate that. And so to me, all of that is the good, is that it is a beautiful knife to my estimation. Um, it's got lots of nice details, a nice sheath. I do love the blade and I really like the handle on it. Um, on the bad side, it is absolutely ridiculous in its size and in its thickness. I mean, seven millimeters stock. It's more than, it's more than a quarter inch thick. 
in terms of blade stock. Um, it has an 8.27 inch blade, which makes this someplace between illegal and war crime in a pretty heavy majority of uh, places. Um, and so you got to know that that's what you're getting into here, right? This is a very, very big, beefy knife. Um, it's completely ridiculous for many tasks. Um, speaking of which, uh, this is not particularly a great knife in the kitchen, right? Uh, I, I went ahead and I gave it a shot. Um, but the thing is, the thickness of the blade makes it a little difficult to make some kind of cuts. Um, as well as the uh, guard, as well as your knuckles being down here, make this very difficult to use against a cutting board. To cut up a pizza, I kind of had to uh, put the knife off the edge of the cutting board so I could get this part flat. Um, it's kind of ridiculous, but hey, here, here we go. Um, but yeah, it was a bit of a chore in the kitchen. I'll be real with you here. Um, next thing, like I mentioned, the sheath on this guy, although fine, doesn't look quite as futuristic and crazy as the original knife. I kind of wish that some of the elements might have been carried over in here. Aside from you, you could make the argument that this little bit here is kind of mirroring this little bit here, but eh, I think they could do a little bit better in terms of making the sheath really fit the knife, aesthetically speaking. Next thing, um, the heel of the blade area here is a little bit weird because what we see here is we have a, a sharpening choil followed by a piece of ricasso followed by yet another groove. And I don't entirely understand the choice to do that rather than taking the blade all the way down to here. Maybe there's a reason for it. Maybe it's just an aesthetic touch, but it's kind of a little bit strange. And when I look at it more closely, it's like, huh? Wait, really? That's kind of weird, but whatever. I, it kind of is what it is. Um, next thing, th th this is brass on here, as are these little bits, and brass is going to patina, right? I mean, you can see right here, it has patinaed a little bit, and I can polish that up a little bit with just a little polishing cloth, and then it'll look, you know, brand freaking new. But the thing is, uh, brass does patina. It is a thing that brass does. There's no two ways around it. See, now it's even a little bit more polished. But nonetheless, um, so that's a thing you're going to want to keep in mind, right? If you're wanting this to be constant Constantly that beautiful, high polish sort of thing, eh, it's probably not the metal you want. Next thing, and moving into things that are a little bit more realistic as, as critiques here, um, the handle is making strong ergonomic decisions for you. It happens to work pretty well in my hands, but the fact is that any time that you have these very strong finger grooves, and especially this back part here, you are actually constraining the size of hand that can go there. And in a lot of ways, it feels like this is built for very large hands, but in many ways, it also feels like it isn't. Because if you have a very large hand, this little part is going to be poking into the back of your hand. And so as a result, this works actually quite well in my hand. It didn't work as well for my wife. She said, you know, this little area here isn't putting my fingers where I want them to be. Be, right? Um, and I imagine somebody with really big hands is going to run into problems from the back side of this. I mean, it's worth also noting that this curl around in the back is really kind of aimed more towards chopping, right? It lets you really get a, a good swing on something because you've got this back part supporting it. But nonetheless, um, it's making ergonomic decisions. It's also very blade heavy. The balance point of this knife is going to be someplace closer to here. Uh, and that's not ideal, especially if you're going to be gripping it further back in that direction, right? So it is a very, very heavy, blade-heavy blade. Heavy blade. Um, so that, that, that is something to keep in mind. Next thing, the black coating on the blade here. Um, it actually looks good, um, but it is a little bit more matte, and there is a little bit of texture to it, right? Um, and I imagine that if you use this enough, that coating could start to wear away, and that might not look ideal. Um, I don't know whether I would rather that be a mirror polish strip or something like that. I can see where they're going with it, and I definitely think it adds a little bit to the sort of borderline cyberpunk aesthetic of the thing, but at the same time, it is, uh, it's quite ridiculous, uh, and, and it's kind of, it was a surprise. Next thing, um, this is a little detail, but actually, if we look along the backside here, and I don't think I'm going to be able to show this off to you in practice, but if we look along the backside, yeah, you can see just there's a slight tiny little bit of gap here between the G10 and the micarta. It almost feels to me, and I, I feel like this has gotten a little bit more pronounced, it almost feels to me like this might be the different materials expanding a little differently due to humidity and, you know, use in the hand. Is it bad? No, but you can absolutely feel a distinction as you run your finger from here, across there, and across there again, right? Um, it, it, there's no ergonomic cost to it or anything. It's just this is not a perfectly seamless transition in the sense that, for instance, this is right here, right? Um, and so th th that is something you're going to want to keep in mind as you are, uh, as you're thinking about this knife. There is that little distinction. Next thing, price-wise, this is expensive. This is a $740 pocket knife. At some level, given how well things are generally done and the fact that it's kind of meant to be art, Okay, I'm not really, I'm not 
too bugged about it. But the thing is, you can get a lot of functional knife for much less than that, right? You can get really big choppery kind of knives from all kinds of people that will function just as well, if not better, um, for much less than that. So if you're just looking for a functional fixed blade, you're paying a lot for the art here. Do keep that in mind. Then finally on the bad side, um, Steel here is A8 mod. That's fine, right? A8 mod is a very solid toughness-focused fixed blade sort of steel. But the thing is, according to the website, it is run at 57, I'm sorry, 56 to 57 hardness. And that's not super impressive from a hardness perspective. I mean, they're upfront about it, right? And at some level, if you're making a big choppery fixed blade knife, you probably want to run it a little bit softer. So it's not brittle. It's not going to snap in half. But at the same time, it is run a little bit on the soft side, right? Um, as a pocket knife, that would be super unimpressive. And, you know, in practice, you know, working on it on some cardboard, I I could definitely feel like, yeah, this isn't going to be the hardest steel ever. Um, It's dropped back up very, very nicely. That's one of the advantages to stop uh, softer steels, but at the same time, this is not an edge retention beast, right? So I, I don't think it's necessarily a problem, and it's they've really just focused on uh, a much more tough heat treat here, but at the same time, they probably could have brought that up a little bit higher, preserving a lot of that toughness, and gotten you a little bit more edge retention. Again, this is going to mostly be an art knife for a lot of people, but it's still a case of know what you're buying, right? And they were upfront about it. It's right there on the site, um, but this is really designed to be a a tough edge rather than to hold that edge forever. And so know that that's what you're doing. Or know that if you're putting it on a shelf to look pretty, that doesn't matter either way. So um, uh, to me, all that is the bad is that the hardness of the A8 mod steel is not the most impressive. Um, It is very expensive. There is a slight ridge between the Micarta and the G10. The black coating on the blade could be controversial for some. Uh, the, the the brass is going, I'm sorry, uh, the handle makes ergonomic decisions for you. The brass is going to patina. The blade heel is a little bit kind of weird. Um, The thickness guard and the handle shape make this a very poor kitchen knife, but I mean... Really? Really? Uh, the sheath feels a little less futuristic, and the knife is just ridiculous on any dimension. On the uh, final conclusion front, I gotta be honest with you, this is kind of a wild knife. And in a lot of ways, I think it's outside of my reviewing comfort zone. Um, because usually I'm reviewing you know, relatively basic functional uh, pocket knives, right? I mean, th this is the kind of thing I normally review. This is the uh, tactile turn thumb stud Rockwell, right? Uh, Rockwell, that is. Uh, it's just talking about hardness. I, uh, Anyways, I, I digress. Th that's the kind of thing I usually do. And then this shows up on my table. And so it's kind of like, wow, <laughs> what do you do with that? But at the same time, I feel like I, I gave it a pretty fair shake, right? Um, tried it in a couple of different contexts, uh, did, did some jackassing with it. And I, there is a lot of good here, right? because it has an absolutely beautiful handle. Uh, it has a great blade. It has a nice sheath. It's got lots of nice details and a design that is, to my eyes, very, very pretty. Mind you, it is ridiculous on every single dimension. The sheath doesn't really match the vibe of the rest of the knife. I, I'll give you that. The blade heel is a little strange. The brass is going to patina. It is kind of a poor choice in the kitchen. The handle is going to make some decisions for you ergonomically that might not fit with your actual hands. Um, The uh, blade is going to be coated. There's the tiny little bit of uh, prominence between the G10 and the Micarta there. It is very expensive, and the steel is uh, very clearly tuned for toughness and easy sharpenability rather than edge retention, and that's not something that I'm necessarily in love with. But I feel like the big issue here is that this is another instance of that art versus tool dichotomy, right? I mean, don't get me wrong, this is a knife, right? It gave some boxes absolute hell, and I did some kitchen work with it. I can confirm it works, and I bet you could go out in the wilderness and badass around with this, and I mean, heck, this could probably spend a week with Advanced Knife Bro and survive. It is very nicely made. The steel is good. There's a lot to love about it as a pocket knife. Well, not pocket knife. Maybe if you got a big enough pocket. Either way, as a knife, right? Um, but the thing is, uh, I also acknowledge that it is mostly a piece of art, at least in my life and in my world, right? It, functionally speaking, it is very thick. It is very heavy. The balance is very far forward, making it very choppy. And the steel is run relatively soft. I mean, sure, you could do some work with it. Um, but if I want a big choppy fixed blade, I could probably get that in plenty of places for less money right? The thing that is relevant about this, the thing that makes this knife most interesting to me is the aesthetics, the looks here. And I gotta say, from an artistic perspective, looking at this as a piece of metalworking and knife-making art here, 
this is very well done, right? I look at this with, you know, a very sort of picky eyes, and there's really not much wrong with it, right? If the thing I'm coming up with is, oh, there's a little tiny bit of, and oh, I guess the steel could be harder. I, dude, this is really, really well done for that perspective, and aesthetically, it is on point. I don't know what point that is, but I know it's on it, right? This is a really, really cool knife, and at some level, evaluating it as a survival knife, going deep dive on the hardness of it, feels a little disingenuous. It's a, it's a solid knife. I mean, it works, but I, I don't think that's probably why you're buying. So ultimately, fine conclusion, the question here comes down to why you're buying. Uh, it comes down to your aesthetic taste and to your price range. If you're just after a big, you know, big old fixed blade for bushcraft, I don't know that this is where I'd send you. I mean, it'll work okay, I'm sure, but there are no shortage of people doing things like that for uh, less money without that strong aesthetic emphasis, without taking the time to make this part look beautiful. If your handle doesn't need to look beautiful, if you don't need polished brass in nice shapes, then by God, don't Go here. I mean, you can save yourself some cash. And similarly, if you're looking at this design, you're like, oh, that's freaking ugly. Then um, what are you even doing here, right? You know your conclusion. It's already closed, right? Um, This is a knife you buy because it looks the way it does and because it's beautifully executed as such. And then the last question becomes cost, right? Do you have 740 bucks to spend on something that is well-executed beauty? I mean, as a tool, yeah, it'll work, but this is more for because it's absolutely gorgeous. Um, and sure, it could cut something in a pinch, but that's that's kind of got to be why you're buying it. And so your budget is going to be the biggest decision factor here. Those things are going to make your choice 100% for you. So I guess final conclusion, it's one heck of a knife. It's one ridiculous knife. It is one beautiful knife, and it is one expensive knife. And if the intersection of all of those ideas is appealing to you, then you know what? I can picture your belt or perhaps your trophy shelf Deck it out with one of these. Okay, hope this has been interesting to you. And have yourselves an absolutely wonderful rest of the day. See, it's got a nice polished bolster. Get it? Because he's Polish. Polish custom knives. Okay. Anyways, hope this has been interesting to you. And uh, have an absolutely wonderful rest of your day. I haven't seen this design replicated elsewhere. Okay, bye now.